Hello, welcome to the next episode of this Mercedes Sprinter van conversion and in today's video we're going to show you how we built this bulkhead storage unit. It's got a carpeted shelf underneath and then we've cut this lightweight furniture board to the shape of this opening to give us the face frame. We're going to put a cupboard door over this eventually and then this will give us some nice storage area for some spare bedding, pillows or sleeping bags. What we want to do is create a template so that we can cut a timber shelf to go in this headliner. And there's quite a lot of curves in this headliner. Predominantly that front edge is fairly straight. It leans back at about a 45 degree angle. And then when you come round to the side here, we've got a radius corner there to get round. And then further along here, there's a little step out. So the thing to do is to make some cardboard templates. So I start off with a small piece of cardboard and just sort of cut ever enlarging circles on that corner just keep offering it up until I know that that's going to fit in there nice and snug This is the bit of board that we've cut for the shelf over the bulkhead and what we're doing now is these angled blocks. I'm just gluing and screwing these to the shelf. Then we're going to cover it in the grey carpet so that it covers all the screw holes that are underneath here. And then with these two screws and the screws in the rest of the blocks we can then just fix it into position and you won't see any fasteners from underneath. The underside of this shelf is going to get covered in grey auto carpet. So before we do that, just so we don't see any of the blemishes, all these pocket hole screws we've filled with wood filler and the screw holes we've filled as well. And then we're just going to sand these back and then once it's covered with carpet you won't notice any of these at all. So here's our shelf, all neatly wrapped with auto carpet. We've got our screws and our battens ready, and then I've got a matching piece of plier which is going to go on the other side. Pre-drilled some holes, exactly the right centres. Because the headliner's fairly flimsy, this will sandwich these two bits of wood together and make it a lot stronger. There we go, the shelf is now in place. 
We've still got the use of the cubby holes above the sun visors. And then now if we look up here, we've got loads of extra storage space. And this shelf is now nice and solid. This front rail, we've made this a lot thicker because what we're going to have is a curtain rail underneath here, fixed to that, which will divide the cab from the rest of the van. All we've got to do now is template the bulkhead and then we'll cut that out of the furniture board. Before I start cutting any furniture board, I'm going to make a cardboard template of this bulkhead. I've kept the old metal bulkhead because that fits perfectly to the shape of the roof. I've just drawn around that on some cardboard. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to leave quite a lot on the bottom because the new bulkhead's going to be a lot deeper than this one. And then once we're happy with the shape in cardboard, I can then transfer that to the furniture board. Okay, so we've got our cardboard template. We started off with this metal bulkhead after a lot of cutting and carving with bits of card this is now what we've got as a template and then what we'll do is we'll tape this to the piece of furniture board use this as a guide and then I'll cut round it with a jigsaw with a really fine tooth blade before we get started cutting this board I just want to talk a little bit about the jigsaw blades Standard jigsaw blades you'll notice have the teeth facing upwards towards the jigsaw and they cut on the upstroke and the reason being what that does is that pulls the jigsaw down to the workpiece so it makes it more stable when you're cutting. Obviously all of the tear out happens on the upper surface so ideally you want to use these and cut with your face down side as being your you know the, the viewable face side and the face up side wants to be your scrap side in my case i want to cut on the face side so i've purchased these jigsaw blades with teeth that are facing downwards so they cut on the downstroke the only drawback with that is it has a tendency if you're not controlling the jigsaw properly to make the jigsaw bounce up and down a little bit so make sure you've got a firm grip on it but what this will do this will ensure there's no tear out on the top surface there may be a little bit of tear out on the bottom we'll just have to go really slowly but i've picked a very fine tooth saw so hopefully that will minimize any tear out anyway So that's the bulkhead cut out. I've just put some masking tape on that face just to mark out where the cupboard door is going to go. This is going to be the opening and then we'll cut another piece of wood to actually form the door which will overlap over the top of this hole. We'll just drill a pilot hole and then we'll run round that mark with a jigsaw. I've clamped a bit of wood there just to minimise any possible tear out but I'm going to come inside the line and then cut it out with the jigsaw. On the edge of all the furniture board we're going to put this black plastic tea trim it's got like little barbs in here and what we need to do is we need to router a groove right in the middle of the edge of the board and then this tea trim pushes into that routed slot and it leaves us with a nice rounded edge that's going to give the edge of the board plenty of protection so what I've got set up in my trim router is a little slot cutting bit 
riding on a ball bearing. The ball bearing will ride on the edge of the wood. The slot, obviously, cutting bit will cut the slot. And then what I've done just to set it up is I've measured from both sides of the board and just made sure that that bit is right in the middle. I'm going to run a test on this bit of scrap first just to check it's exactly in the right place and then we'll run the actual piece. So there's our routed groove and then what we can do is just take a piece of this trim just offer that up there we go that sits in there just lovely so that's nice so we can run the rest of our boards now We've come inside to the workshop because it looks like there was going to be quite a few spots of rain it come over really dark outside so i don't want to take any risks of getting this wood wet so now's the time just to apply this t trim to these routed slots that we cut earlier there was two or three schools of thought on my previous video as to what to do with these whether to put them in dry whether to put glue on them. A few people said that sometimes they come loose over time. So I think I'm going to go with the glue method just for belt and braces, just to make sure that these don't work their way loose. So all I'm going to do is use a little bit of the Gorilla Glue. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit into the slot that I've routed, run it around with my brush, and then we'll push the tea trim in afterwards. Just make sure it's pushed in nice and firmly to these slots. It's very, very flexible, this stuff, so it moulds around to these bends, no trouble at all. Fortunate that it's been really warm today, so it's actually quite pliable, this stuff, when it's a bit warmer. If you was doing this in the cold, I might even suggest like putting the heating on and sticking it in maybe a bucket of warm water even, to be honest. Make sure it's pushed into all these corners. All right, and I'm going to trim it just a hair bigger, and then I'm going to push it, pull that out, and push it back in. There, so hopefully you can see that black trim is pushed into that slot all the way around now. That really finishes off that opening nice and neatly. at the grand unveiling. That's the bulkhead all screwed in place. We've just put some little screw caps over the screws just to finish that off nicely. We've taken the plastic wrap off 
and you can see that high gloss shine it's almost like a mirror really pleased with how that's come out we've got a cupboard door to go over that opening with some hinges we've got wall cupboards to go down this side and then look how neatly that's scribed into that corner there really pleased with how that's turned out This furniture board that we're using, we purchased from a company called Moreland. It's a lightweight plywood. It's veneered on both sides. There's a really wide choice of colors and wood effects. And you can go onto their website. I'll put the link in the description below and you can have a look at their entire range. You can also order yourself some samples and you'll get those in the post within a few days. So you can have a look, see what it looks like before you actually purchase the board. We've gone for a high gloss Sobrano finish on our furniture board and this is going to be the finish on all of our cabinets and all of our cupboards. When we were deciding what we wanted to use in our camper van we approached Moreland and after the NEC motorhome show we went up to their factory and visited their showroom. They were very kind and showed us around, let us look at some large furniture boards and that was when we decided that this is what we actually wanted to use. And I just want to say a huge thanks to Sam and his team who were really helpful when we went up to visit them.